Welcome to Doc9 Tech Talks. This week on the podcast, I'm joined by Jesper, who is the CEO of ULS Technology, one of the leading conveyancing panel managers in the UK. Prior to joining ULS in January of this year, he held the role of Global Head of Digital as a Channel at HSBC, and before that, Chief Operating Officer at Compare the Market. So firstly, Jesper, thank you for joining us today. Um, do you want to start by giving us a bit of background about yourself and why you joined ULS? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I mean, you did a great job of sort of uh, at least the headlines of what I've done before. I usually introduce it as for the last two years, I've been to, uh, making banking personal and relevant, sort of trying to recreate the experience of walking into a branch before ATMs and and uh, and debit cards. So where you had a chat with the teller sort of talked about where you're going on holiday or um, uh, were you buying a house or were you making an investment or did you need a loan or whatnot and doing replicating that experience in digital channels and that hasn't really been as relevant really if you think about it how critical that was in 2020 as branches closed all over the world and suddenly we, um, we had a great job to do to looking after our customers and making sure that they had the right information as it pertained to their specific contextual situation, um, uh, whether for them losing their job or being furloughed or in other ways. So, so that's, that's the last two years. Prior to that, uh, sort of, uh, I, I usually joke and say, I never thought I was gonna run a toy store, but I've done that as well with uh, cute meerkats everywhere. Um, and that experience of really helping people engage with the household finances um, was, uh, quite frankly, a great job, sort of seeing customers, how they were saving money on insurance or utilities and whatnot, uh, outstanding. And we managed to sort of continuously grow that business and the customer satisfaction at the same time. And then before that, I spent about 15 years in online travel and sort of run running two-sided marketplaces has always been something that I've been doing in my career, sort of outside of the two years I spent with, uh, with HSBC. Mm-hmm. So why join ULS? Um, so first of all, we, we operate a great business on a sort of two-sided marketplace sitting between consumers introduced traditionally via brokers or estate agents or lenders or others and, um, and, and, the, uh, and the conveyances. And I think it is such an opportunity of making this experience better. I, I have half sort of said, and I think it's a little bit unfair actually on conveyances that I haven't met anybody that's been high-fiving in the streets about the conveyancing experience. And I think the first reason for that is people actually don't know what is conveyancing. I, I, I lose track of how many people that, I, that I've sort of talked to and all very smart people that sort of said, well, I get I need to do the legal bit, but I do, do I need to do the conveyancing bit as well? So there's such a lack of understanding of what does a conveyancer really do? What is that craft of making sure that they de-risk the purchase as, or the sale for that matter as much as possible? Um, and, uh, and there's absolutely an opportunity to make that space much more customer focused, uh, simpler, faster. And that, that's the sort of reason that I, I definitely was attracted to, um, to the space and to ULS specifically. Sounds good. Yeah, no, yeah, I guess like most people, having been through the uh, conveyancing process a few times now, uh, I've certainly shared the view that there are opportunities to improve the experience and also the speed of the process, uh, potentially. Yeah. Um, but I guess before we sort of look forward and talk about those future opportunities, how would yeah. you describe the kind of current state of play when it comes to technology in the conveyancing process? Yeah. Um, so I guess the, the first thing I'll say is, uh, as, as for those of you who's watching this on YouTube, will see that I have boxes in the, in the background and I just went through that experience myself. And, uh, I definitely, my pad is full of sort of notes on, the, on, the, on the moving experience and, uh, and some of the pain points that I experienced well recognizing that I'm the sort of sample size of one as well. Um, yeah, this state Sorry, I, I lose track of your question. You said the state of technology in the conveyancing, right? Yes, the I'm reason sorry. why it hasn't been adopted. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess um, I guess there's lots of good sort of solutions out there. There's doing a little bit of the different processes, making it a li- little bit more digital um, for maybe for the conveyancer, a little bit better for the lender. Maybe the a good example of definitely many people sort of experience that, whether it be 
for convincing for identification verification or whether it's for opening a bank account or something else that experience where you scan your face and you sort of use open banking to check uh, some details that exists so there's component parts of the journey that has been better um why haven't conveyance is sort of necessarily why hasn't the industry as a whole adapted technology? I think there's lots of good reasons for that. Maybe it's not as intuitive. Um, uh, I guess the analogy would be why have why aren't we all driving electric cars at the moment, right? We, they've been on the, available for a long time. Uh, they're better for the environment. They're generally good to drive. They're faster if you're a little bit thrill seeking. Um, why haven't we? enjoyed them, right? That, that, that's a good question. I don't know anybody that can really sort of answer that apart from the price point might have been a little bit wrong. And maybe that's a good analogy thinking about is the price point right for some of the technology that sort of sits? Is the value exchange right in uh, making the the work of a conveyancer so much more efficient versus what is the price to pay for it? Um, I think that's definitely one of my hypotheses. There's a lot more that, that US and the overall sort of industry can do in how do we make the job of the conveyancer better? And as a result of that, the customer experience better for the buyer or seller, making that home moving experience better? And how do we keep all the stakeholders sort of better informed along the way as well? Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So I guess um, it's one of these things where we, we do a lot of work in the mortgage process as well. And you think about, you know, it, it generally it ticks over. It's, there's a lot of similarities, I think, actually, because it's, it's existed as it's existed for quite a while. There are some obvious potential wins there in terms of how the parties can communicate with each other better automatically and pass data, digital ID, etc. But I guess if you're on the board of one of these uh, companies thinking about if I invest in this new technology, how long am I? How long is it going to take to get an ROI on this? And, uh, you know, uh, and I think that's something that's starting to change based on customer demand where especially at the moment where there's you know a race to get completions by certain dates etc you know as a consumer i think i'd be more than happy to uh, uh, to pay a little bit more to have a faster service that was more technology enabled potentially so i don't know if you think it perhaps will become a bit of a you know uh, the market forces will drive drive that that as a competitive advantage in future potentially yeah i mean there's a lot in that observation i think um, mm-hmm. one I think it's a little bit pull and push. Like, um, is it going to be more pulling it through the um, through the whole industry, or will the consumer just push for it? I, I'm not. I'm not sure about that just yet. I can say, are people willing to pay for something that is going to make their life easier? Generally, absolutely. Do people really understand? Back to what I said uh, initially. Do people really understand what conveyancing is? I mean, I'm losing track of how many people that sort of gone. I've been through this state agent. I found the house I want to live in. I now I have my offer accepted. My mortgage is good to go. Mm-hmm. And now there's this piece in the middle that um, that's just holding me back from moving in and start living in my new home. So it's sort of a block or it's friction between dreaming and reality. Mm-hmm. And, and we need to make that blocker be better understood we need to make it more transparent we need to make it more customer focused Mm -hmm. um and quite frankly the industry needs to move faster right and it's archaic that i was just speaking to one of my friends this morning who's a first-time buyer in the uk um and that individual is like so how long is this going to take like a couple of weeks or whatnot and i was like no it's longer right is it a leaseholder freehold you're like what does that mean so the more we can make this simple for people to understand, the more transparent we can make it, the faster we can make it. Quite frankly, we're going to take stress out. We're going to take anxiety out. Which, um, I think we have enough stress and anxiety in our world right now. And if we can make it a, a calmer, happier place where people are going to feel more in control of this really high risk activity for them of taking out a mortgage for um, X amount of pounds, that's a good outcome. If we can make it more intuitive for people to engage with it, uh, even better. Now, is that need going to come from a consumer or from the industry? Quite frankly, I don't know that right now. But I do know that if there's a great product out there, then consumers typically test it. They find it good. Now, this is not the same. I, I typically say doing conveyancing is not something you do so frequently. Um, it's not like going uh, buying oat milk or something else on Amazon, right? And have it delivered the next day at the latest. So I think we it will take time to get this right. Uh, I think there is a demand for it. I think it, when, when the right sort of uh, formula is found, it 
it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be faster. It's going to be more intuitive. It's going to be simpler. It's going to be better for everybody. It's going to be so transparent that people will feel in control again. That will drive down anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. um, and who wouldn't tell their friend that they just went through that process? Yes. That sounds good. I mean, I guess in terms of a future vision, that, that sounds very appealing. But do you want to break down a bit uh, what, what role you think technology can play in improving the convincing process, I guess, from all parties involved, right? Not just the yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if we, um, if we think about our digital move product that we have out in market today, we have pushed in excess of 40,000 cases through that first iteration already. And the CSAT scores are really solid. Uh, the, um, uh, the conversations that we are uh, having with consumers uh, when they've been through it are, are solid. The time that is uh, sort of saved by not shifting paper around is good. Mm -hmm. People feel more in control when they see the different statuses of what's happening with, uh, with their file or their case. They like communicating in a secure environment. And I, I think there's something that works incredibly well from that first phase. There are other there's, there's other things that we need to course correct in, in future phases, but by and large, I think we validated the um, hypothesis that putting technology in the hands of consumers and conveyancers and other stakeholders is a good thing. It drives uh, if, uh, inefficiency down uh, and it delights customers. Mm -hmm. So as we build on that and taking sort of a test and learn approach to that, mm -hmm. we'll find better things that we can do uh, we're going to find other features. We have a whole roadmap full of features that we want to take to market. And we're going to roll that out over the coming months and whatnot. Sounds good. So you mentioned your digital move products. I guess for those that aren't sort of that familiar with the features and, and what it actually does in this first yeah. season, do you want to sort of paint the picture a bit on that? Yeah. So if you're a consumer and you, and I, I was a consumer mover not long ago, but if you were a consumer, you sort of typically have received lots of papers to sort of fill in your, your, your starter pack or your welcome pack or whatnot from the, uh, your seller pack, or, sorry, your buyer pack from the consumer, the seller pack, if you're a seller mm -hmm. from the conveyancer, we digitize that experience. You, mm -hmm. you do that uh, through digital move today. Um, we allow you to see as your case progresses, uh, statuses updating in the tool, um, and you can communicate with your solicitor in a secure environment. Um, that's largely what Digital Move do today. Uh, going forward, we see that platform being expanded and extended to truly keep all stakeholders um, abreast of what's going on with the file. And we see a lot more features and functionality going live. And as I said, we have a sort of full roadmap for that. Um, now, why is that great? I guess other than saving, uh, uh, saving lots of trees for the environment, as in we're we're not shifting lots of paper around and and uh, and causing lots of environmental damage as a result of it. Uh, consumers like it at the same time, and we're seeing very positive feedback from conveyances that's truly embraced the product as well. In that, it makes their life easier. It it uh, makes them more efficient. They can either do more work, mm -hmm. or they can uh, spend more time. I'm with, uh, with the customers and I am staggered coming into this industry, uh, seeing the, the amount of the percentage of time that conveyances talks to me about responding to inbound chases, yeah. uh, from, uh, from buyers and sellers. It is, it is so clear that there's a lot of ambiguity in the process. If you don't do this every day, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, in the same way, I normally give this example. If you if you order your deliver room food or pizza from Domino's or something else, an Amazon sort of parcel or, or anything, most sort of consumer experiences today, like in the case of the of the deliver room order, it's like, yeah, the, the check is printed in the kitchen. We're now mixing your ingredients. We're cooking your food. Mm -hmm. We're boxing it up, like turn your oven on now so that your food doesn't go cold when you are. It's on the bike or in the car. It's actually pulling up in your drive right now or in front of your house. Uh, get ready, get the, get the uh, sort of cutlery out, talk into your food, have a great evening, right? That is not the experience you're getting when you're when you're walking through conveyancing. You're getting an experience of uh, uh, 
yes, you complete the pack, we're going to come back to you uh, in, in most cases. And you sort of said, and if you, because of this, I sort of typically talk about this Venn diagram on one hand being uh, infrequency of purchase and therefore infamiliarity of purchase and the other sort of really big financial decision uh, for most people, the biggest financial decision they're ever going to make. You put the two together and that's in the middle, you have that um, stress, anxiety, mm -hmm. concern. So if you don't understand it, you we need to create it much better for everyone to understand what the hell is going on yeah. with this file. How do you, how do you best, uh, how do you know what you need to do right now, if anything, or just keep you informed so it's personal relevant information to you? What's yeah. gonna happen next and when am I gonna expect it? That's no different. This, this, this is all based, should be based on data points as, as technology is adapted within the sector. We will lift those data points and make sure that people are feeling in control of the, of the job that they're actually paying somebody to do. Mm -hmm. I guess that's probably a majorly well-timed launch of the product given you know, the events of the last 12 months and the move to, you know, especially the early part of last year uh, uh, where, you know, some smaller building societies that kind of had to have wet signatures, for example, and paper, you know, they just had to change how they, they, they worked to accept digital signatures and things like that. So I'm guessing, uh, so it sounds like you've had good consumer uptake of the app so far. I think you mentioned 40 odd thousand. Um... Yeah, we've had in excess of 40,000 cases for the tool right now. Um, and I think um, <clears throat> we'll continue to push them through. We'll learn through those. We know as I also said, there's things that we learned that's not so great. There's things that we learned that are really great. And we have a, a good roadmap for it. You know what? I, I think if you look across industries, the last 12 months has taught everyone a lot. And, um, and digital adoption has been phenomenal in demographics that you didn't anticipate they were going to ever sort of adopt uh, technology. I was uh, video conferencing with my... Uh, almost 80 year old father-in-law the other day, something that I never thought was gonna be possible. During the middle of last year, mm -hmm. I even I handed him uh, a, uh, a, a phone and I said, uh, just turn the music uh, on or off, right? And he was able to find his favorite artist okay. engaging with the user interface. Yeah, There are such an adoption rate that's been accelerated by by what we have been going through and that remoteness is not going to go away. And mm -hmm. isn't that wonderful that people can live in places where they want to live and still do their job and mm -hmm. uh, work in a different way, engage in a different way with their, mm -hmm. with their profession. Yeah. So I think we, we have been propelled many years ahead that we didn't anticipate we we're going to get here so fast. Mm -hmm. Consumer exception is there for, um, for engaging with digital tools, we can only go too slow in meeting that demand. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that, of course, there's a massive human element in, uh, in most of, of cases there sort of involves real complexity mm -hmm. and nothing will probably ever take out that human element. I mm -hmm. mean, I, uh, I'll consider myself an at least average intelligent sort of guy and, uh, uh, going through my convincing experience to bring it right back, there were things that I had never heard of and I needed somebody to explain it to me. Now, could that have been explained? Some of it could have been explained with a video. Could some of it have been, could I have read some of it? Sure. But the comfort of a real legal professional mm. taking me through some of that and, and putting some of my concern at rest, like really quickly, like there were some things I remember asking for uh, I think it's called chapel insurance. It shows my lack of knowledge, right? Um, I was like, well, what about that? What are we doing? What are we doing with this chapel thing? I'm underwriting this risk. And he's like, don't worry about it. I've sold it out already. Like that's the experience you want, right? You want that very clear human interaction and you want somebody to do the job that is causing you a headache. Mm. I guess even, you know, beyond the kind of communication with uh, the user at the right times, you know, the very nature of the process and the regula regulations around, you know, the convincing process. And, you know, it's unlikely, I think, to be something that, you know, in the future will ever be a straight automatic, automated straight through kind of process. Um, so I assume that the, the kind of success of your digital move product and, and other similar apps is quite dependent on 
kind of the, the human element you mentioned around solicitors actually kind of embracing the other end of that, that, that platform, you know, updating statuses and milestones at the relevant time in a timely fashion. Obviously, there's probably a motivation for not getting chased by consumers if they do. But <laughs> how can panel managers like ULS make this easier for them? Yeah, I, I guess if you I guess if you think about it, they, they could make that decision right now. Now, right, they, everyone could be more proactive. But if you have to turn the handle harder manually constantly, mm. that becomes prohibitively either expensive or impossible, right? Because you just have a lot of other things going on, and uh, your caseload may mean that uh, it, it, it does not just not doable right now. So we have to find ways, and I think we have good ideas about how we're going to make some of that be more automated. Um, mm. Uh, and I'll, I'll sort of be happy to talk more about that in, in a couple of months or in six months, say. Um, I think uh, there's no question. Everybody we've spoken to so far in our research, both on conveyance and other stakeholders, as well as consumer side, have been very receptive to what we've been talking about. They've, they have all been talking about that pain point. You just talk about the... Uh, the sort of updating manual statuses and stuff. There's just the, there's a better way of doing that. I, I think back to my time in travel actually, and that's almost 10 years ago, mm. we were up against a very similar situation and, and we found ways around it. And what mm. we found back then is probably not appropriate here, but what I'm saying is spend some time, understand it. What is the pain point? What's the opportunity? How can we help the consumer or the stakeholder? Um, and we'll find ways around that. I think we're doing a, a great job at ULS um, uh, finding a great broad set of, of panel firms for the specific consumer's need. And as we add value to that process beyond just the sort of matchmaking or, or dating game, um, we'll, we'll, we'll bring more to market that's going to make that experience better for, for both parties of that platform. That sounds good. I guess the kind of bigger picture as well is, you know, think about you know, the land registry, what they're pushing in terms of new technology and digital street, et cetera. Yeah. I guess as that further develops, that's actually going to open up all, more opportunities for automating some of the kind of, uh, you know, some parts of the process always going to need, need that kind of human touch, I guess, but there's probably other parts that uh, potentially, you know, uh, could be more automated and updated in future. Yeah, and I think that there, it, it's great to see how the government at this borders level are embracing uh, technology technology as well um, in, in a range of different areas, but certainly the land register, I've had some very, very um, positive conversations uh, with, with people over there. Um, and they're, they're certainly very excited about what, what they can bring to market too, and, and to partner with industry players. We're delighted to have uh, a close relationship with, um, uh, with the land register. And I, I think we share a passion for making there's a better process for everybody involved. Yeah. So I guess if we take a step back along this conversation, you've mentioned a few times, you know, previous roles and uh, a few lessons there. Are there any sure. kind of big takeouts or lessons from your time at HSBC or Compare the Market or before that you think, you know, for, give a different perspective and be quite useful for uh, the convincing kind of industry to think about? Mm. I think the first one is focus on the customer. I mean, I, I can't say that enough. I think that, if I look at many spaces, they are less efficient. They are, you have uh, verticals of solutions, but they're not, they're thought about as company out or industry out rather than customer out. And really sort of putting, it sounds like a bit of a cliche, but putting yourself in the shoes of the customer is not a bad thing to do. Like literally really understand what are the pain points? Go and meet with customers, mm -hmm. speak to them, ask them, aggregate that data, find trends and build strategies or roadmaps around how you can help them. Um, and and that's, that's absolutely a, um, a lesson that I've taken from, from anything from the, from the first. I mean, whether I've been selling great hotel stays or holidays to customers or helping them stop being ripped off by uh the gas or so gas electricity insurance provider compare the market or how we made people engage with their financial health at um at the bank and, and many others so so i think that is a definitely a lesson another lesson could be 
uh, talk to people when it matters and make it really contextually personal and relevant. So if we think about that as to your point that you're updating the status is like there's stuff you don't need to know, right? And there's other stuff that you want to know. Mm. And we need to make sure that we understand using data, listening to customers and their, whether it be transactional, behavioral, sentiment data, whatever it is, speak to people when they really matter. Like as an example, how many times do you get uh, notifications on your phone and you just dismiss them? That's a relevant conversation that you shouldn't, nobody should have been pushing that message to you. Mm -hmm. What you should have is the information when you need it so that we stop those chasers of conveyances. They can spend their time doing what they're absolutely best at and doing conveyancing, not responding to your chasers. So make the, res make the conversation personal, relevant, contextually right is absolutely, um, mm -hmm. I think, a learning. And that's, as, as I said, pinpoint that right contextual time for the conversation is, uh, is incredibly um, critical. Mm. I'll say two other things. I think um, be helpful to the consumer to drive down um, every, luxum, every, uh, every reluctance rather, sorry, mm -hmm. to take action. Um, allow people to the, lower the barrier for people to take action of their own situation. So part of that is keeping them updated. Part is also say, rather than say, here's the problem or here's a, here's, here's a situation, say, here's a situation, here's three things you could do or other people do it like this or this is probably the right one for you or, um, uh, curate the responses that's maybe right for you or um, as you choose a provider or even a conveyancer, here, here's somebody that's probably good for your situation is another one. So really help eradicate inertia in engaging is, uh, is something that I, I've taken in a lesson. And the last one, and it's just, it sort of underscores pretty much everything I do is just keep it simple. Like say it as it is, don't, don't make it complex. Like, and I think that is probably going to be more important than anything in um, as, as, as we go on our journey because of that infrequency and infamiliarity that people have with conveyancing or the process of buying, selling and owning a home. Um, we have to make that simple. We have to make it simple so people understand it. And it is for us and for the rest of the industry to dial up um, transparency and dial down complexity and get things to that really simple, uh, intuitive and customer focused experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And I guess the, the challenge of simplicity is often the hardest thing to, to deliver sometimes in terms of digital products and that kind of the modern processes of build small, test of users, really understand your users. That is the key to really kind of unlocking that and, and delivering those simple experiences. Yeah. Sounds like that, that, that you're sort of well versed and experiencing that from your other, other roles. Um, so I guess um, we're almost out of time for today. So I think it's a really useful insight that you shared. Uh, so I'll just end on, on thanking you again for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Um, I look forward to seeing how things develop at ULS. It sounds like uh, when I do my next house move, I should definitely look out to make sure they've got the digital move app uh, with my conveyancer. Um, and I'll look out for that. Brilliant. Well, thanks. Yeah, please do. And, and thanks for having me. It's been, uh, it's been a delight to talk about this and everything else that we do with e-conveyancer, with... Uh, Legal Eye and everything else you does. So yeah, I'll, I'll look me up in six months and we can chat again and uh, talk about how that's going as well. Sounds good.